So the topic I'm going to talk about is common cardiac surgeries in pediatric population. Do not have any disclosures. Currently, the um, surgeries for available for um, congenital heart disease, they're increasing in number. They're getting more complicated, and they are being done at a younger and younger age um, for correction. Uh, this leads to an increase in the survival rate of this population till adulthood, and currently there are more adults with congenital heart diseases as compared to children with congenital heart diseases. The outline for this lecture would be um, the palliations which are available for increasing or decreasing the pulmonary blood flow. I'm going to talk about the intracardiac baffles, including the atrial level baffles and the ventricular baffles, as well as the outflow tract reconstructions. Um, as well as more definitive repairs for truncoconal abnormalities and aortic outflow repair, and some of the complications associated with these surgeries. The palliation shunts include systemic to pulmonary artery shunts, um, such as the Blalock toxic shunt, the modified kind, the central shunts. The right ventricle to pulmonary artery shunts include the Seno shunt, and I'm also going to talk about the cable pulmonary anastomosis. The Blalock toxic shunt was classically um, designed to be uh, anastomosis between the subclavian artery and the ipsilateral branch pulmonary artery. Um, currently, an artificial conduit made of polytetrafluoroethylene is used to connect the subclavian artery to the branch pulmonary artery. It spares the subclavian artery and uh, works perfectly well. Um, it was originally uh, meant to relieve cyanosis in patients with tetralogy of fallot. However, currently it's being also used for tricuspidotresia, pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum and VST, as well as single ventricle physiologies. The complications um, of this conduit include stenosis and or thrombosis, seroma formation, and tenting of the branch pulmonary artery. This patient um, was a few weeks old and had pulmonary atresia with a hypoplastic right ventricle. The pulmonary branches were confluent, uh, but the left pulmonary branch was being supplied by a large PDA as seen on this axial view as well as on the posterior image of the 3D um, uh, image. A few weeks later, uh, she had a modified Blalock toxic shunt placed, as you can tell, uh, pointed by the arrow, and it is widely patent. Another example of modified Blalock toxic shunt extending from the subclavian artery down to the right branch pulmonary artery. The right-hand image shows a thrombus in the uh, uh, BT shunt, uh, which has been taken down after uh, cable pulmonary anastomosis has been uh, performed. The other systemic to pulmonary shunts include Waterston, uh, which is an ascending aorta to right branch pulmonary artery shunt, and Potts shunt, which is a descending aorta to the LPA uh, branch. And the central shunt includes um, ascending aorta or brachycephalic artery to the confluence of the uh, pulmonary artery. The Waterston and uh, Potts shunts are not currently used as they increased pulmonary blood flow leading to pulmonary hypertension. However, central shunt is still um, being currently used for several indications. The Seno shunt is an example of an RV uh, to PA uh, shunt, and it, it extends from the free wall of the right ventricle uh, to the confluence of the pulmonary artery, uh, similar to the central shunt. However, unlike the uh, central shunt, uh, it does have an advantage. The other systemic to pulmonary shunts cause a wide uh, systolic blood pressure due to the steel of the blood flow uh, to the pulmonary bed during diastole, leading to fairly significant drop in the diastolic uh, blood pressure. The RV2PA shunt takes care of that due to the uh, right ventricular pumping action. Another example of Seno shunt in a patient with aortic atresia and single ventricle. The image on the right shows thrombosis in a Seno shunt after um, placement of a Glenn shunt in this patient with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. The cavopulmonary shunts include the Glen and the Fontan. Uh, the Glen classically was end-to-side anastomosis of superior vena cava to the right branch pulmonary artery. 
the right uh, branch pulmonary artery, however, was divided from the main pulmonary arteries, such as, such as the entire flow from the superior vena cava was uh, directed just into the right lung. Currently, the right branch pulmonary artery is left as a confluence to the uh, left and the main pulmonary artery, and the blood from the superior vena cava flows in a bidirectional manner to both lungs. Here's an example of a classic gland anastomosis, where the SVC is anastomosed to the right branch pulmonary artery, which has been divided from the main pulmonary artery. On the right side, uh, the same patient um, shows the uh, complication of a classic gland, which are these small pulmonary um, ABMs, which are formed because uh, the right pulmonary bed does not see any blood return from the liver. The liver produces anti-angiogenic factor, which actually prevents the AVM formation. Two uh, different patients with bidirectional glands, as you can see the SVC anastomosis with the uh, confluent pulmonary branches, um, and the gland anastomosis is widely patent. Fontan originally uh, described uh, this procedure as a combination of classic gland and a conduit placement from the inferior vena cava to the left branch pulmonary artery. This was then abandoned for classic procedure where the gland was completely um, abandoned and right atrium was connected to the branch pulmonary artery directly. And it was felt that the right atrium will act as a pump for the pulmonary blood flow. However, the right atrium over time does not act as a good pump and gets dilated. Modern palliation of the fontan includes lateral tunnel through the right atrium and an extra cardiac conduit. Here's an example of classic fontan where on the left hand side you see a dilated right atrium and on the right um, you see a conduit arising from the right atrium confluencing with the pulmonary artery. These are two different patients with history of trichospiratresia, status post fontan completion, with extra cardiac conduits connecting the inferior vena cava to the pulmonary bed, and uh, gland anastomoses can also be seen. Um, here's an example of a lateral tunnel where you see the aneurysmal dilatation of the fontan shunt on the left. Uh, the same patient from a posterior view shows LPA stenosis. Intracardiac baffles can be performed at an atrial level or ventricular level. The atrial level uh, baffle was first described by Senning, where the patient's own tissue were used to create a baffle where the systemic veins uh, would drain into the left atrium and the pulmonary veins were made to drain into the right atrium atrium in patients with detransposition of great arteries. Mustard performed a similar um, surgery, however, it was with placement of a pantaloon-shaped um, artificial baffle, but had similar results. The uh, ventricular level baffle uh, was performed by Rastelli in patients with detransposition of great arteries and a VST as well as pulmonary stenosis. A uh, conduit was placed through the VST, making the blood flow directly from the right ventricle into the aorta. Here's an example of a uh, Senning baffle where you can see the um, blood flow from the superior vena cava being directed into the left atrium. There's no contrast in the IVC, but um, similarly, the IVC blood flow is also directed towards the left atrium. And on the image on the right hand side, you see the pulmonary veins draining into the right atrium. Another example of sending baffle, uh, you can see the contrasted uh, blood in the superior vena cava draining into the left atrium along with the non-contrasted blood mixing in with the contrast in the left atrium. And on the right hand side, you see the pulmonary veins draining into the right atrium. Um, here's an example of mustard baffle uh, with similar results, the pulmonary veins draining into the right atrium and the systemic veins draining into the left atrium. Restelli shunt, as I described earlier, is um, where the conduit is placed through the VST and a patch is uh, made to close the VST beyond the aorta and the blood flow from the uh, systemic ventricle is directed into the uh, aorta. On the left-hand side, you see an RV to PA conduit, which is also part of the Restelli uh, procedure in which there is narrowing of the conduit. 
another patient with history of detransposition of great vessels with an RV to PA conduit. Metallic stent has been placed in the conduit to open the narrowing of stenosis uh, that occurred. And on the right-hand side, again, um, stenosis in the conduit with hypoplastic right branch pulmonary artery as well. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome includes a small left ventricle as well as aortic valve hypoplasia or atresia as well as a hypoplastic aorta, ascending aorta. Norwood described three-staged procedure in which the first stage includes formation of neo-aorta in which the hypoplastic aorta is um, anastomosed with the uh, pulmonary artery in a side-to-side fashion and a systemic to pulmonary shunt such as a central seno or modified BT shunt described earlier is formed. A few months later, when the pulmonary vascular resistance uh, drops, um, then the systemic to pulmonary shunt is taken down and a bidirectional glen shunt is formed. And stage three, which is the Fontan uh, completion, is where you have the IVC um, blood directed into the pulmonary system uh, to complete the flow in series. This is an example of uh, DKS or Damus K stencil anastomosis where the hypoplastic aorta is anastomosed with the pulmonary artery. The aorta, the native hypoplastic aorta still supplies the coronary arteries um, and so the preservation of the native aorta is uh, still important. An alternative to Norwood 1 uh, procedure is a procedure called hybrid. Um, in which there is a large metal stent placed in the um, PDA and to keep that open as well as the branch pulmonary arteries are banded so that there's more um, shunting of blood from the pulmonary arterial system into the systemic circulation. The corrective procedures that I'm going to talk about are for tetralogy of fallot, detransposition of great arteries, truncus arteriosus, aortic stenosis, and coarctation. The um, Original surgery for tetralogy of fallot was a blaylock toxic shunt, uh, then later on with its modifications. But currently, uh, tetralogy of fallot can be corrected either primarily as a single step procedure or later on as the second um, step procedure in which the VSD is closed and the right ventricular outflow tract obstruction is relieved. The exceptions to these surgeries are for patients with tetralogy of fallot with absent pulmonary valves or pulmonary artery or branch pulmonary artery atresia. Here is a right ventricle to PA conduit um, on the left with, again, some um, stenosis, as you can tell. And on the right as well, there's an RB to PA conduit with two separate areas of stenosis. Aneurysmal dilatation of the proximal um, RB2PA conduit is seen, and there is hypoplasia of the left branch pulmonary artery, whereas the right branch pulmonary artery is fatulous and enlarged. Um, on the right-hand image, you see the uh, hypoplasia of the right branch pulmonary artery with the metallic stent placed at the origin. Uh, in this case, the left branch pulmonary artery is fatulous in appearance. This was a four-week-old patient with history of tetralogy of fellow with pulmonary atresia. She had large major aortopulmonary collateral vessels uh, extending down from the um, subclavian and the innominate um, arteries with branches of their own supplying several segments of the lungs. The V-shaped structure in the background is uh, are the native pulmonary arteries. A few weeks later, she had another CTA in uh, which showed the unifocalization of the of the major aortopulmonary collaterals in which they are taken down from the systemic arteries and are coalesced and joined to the main pulmonary artery and a RB to PA conduit is also formed. I um, spoke about the atrial level baffles for the um, patients with detransposition of great arteries. However, currently another procedure called arterial switch procedure is more commonly performed in which the trunks of the aorta and the pulmonary artery are divided and are replaced with each other, exchanged for each other. This is a Lecomte maneuver in which the pulmonary artery is anterior to the aorta and the branch pulmonary arteries are saddled on both sides and sometimes it leads to stenosis of the branch PAs. 
This is a more commonly performed procedure for detransposition of great arteries, and it's called Jatin switch, in which, again, the trunks of the aorta and pulmonary artery are uh, divided and switched, and then the coronary arteries are also re-implanted. For uh, truncus arteriosus, the surgical options are division of the branch pulmonary arteries from the conal artery, placement of a right ventricle to PA conduit, and closure of the VSD. Here's a 17-year-old with history of truncus arteriosus, status post placement of an RV to PA conduit. Um, she had some conduit stenosis. As you can see, there are multiple metal stents placed to relieve the obstruction. The patient also had history of uh, recurrent coarctations and tubular hypoplasia of the distal arch is still seen. Aortic stenosis surgeries um, and interventions um, include valvuloplasty and balloon dilatation. Ross procedure and Ross Kono modifications, as well as patch enlargement of the supravalvular aortic stenosis. Here's a 18-year-old who had history of um, aortic stenosis, status post balloon valvuloplasty, and is, as you can tell, there is still some residual left ventricular outflow tract obstruction with some aneurysmal dilatation of the ascending aorta, measuring about 42 millimeters in diameter at the level of the right branch pulmonary artery. Um, here's another teenage child who had a history of Ross procedure and restenosed, and finally had Ross Kono procedure. As you can tell, there is some narrowing of the right ventricular outflow tract with aneurysmal dilatation of the main pulmonary artery. The patient also had um, hypoplasia or stenosis of the um, distal ascending aorta. Coarctation repair includes end to end anastomosis with removal of the uh, short segment uh, coarctation and possibly the ductal tissue as well. Subclavian flap repairs uh, were common historically um, but not performed as frequently today. There are also conduit placement if it's a long segment uh, coarctation. The catheter-based interventions include balloon angioplasty and placement of metallic stents or more commonly covered stents these days. On the left is an image of a CTA in which you can see the uh, metallic stent in patient with coarctation uh, with some post anotic dilatation. And on the right is a small pseudoaneurysm on the left lateral wall of the descending aorta approximately. And this patient had a known intimal tear during balloon valvuloplasty uh, several years ago and now has a small pseudoaneurysm. This patient had a subclavian flap repair with recurrent coarctation and then an aorto aorto conduit was placed. The conduit is widely patent with a small kink seen at the level of the arch. You can also see aneurysmal dilatation of the aorta where the subclavian flap was anastomosed. In conclusion, um, the cardiac surgeries for congenital heart diseases um, are constantly evolving with new advancements every day. And as cardiac imagers, we need to be uh, well informed about the current cardiac procedures as well as the old older surgeries as more and more of these patients are coming in as adults with congenital heart disease. Both CT and MRI have a place in the long-term surveillance of congenital